Hi, today I want to tell you about some uh, discoveries from the Paleolithic, mainly from recent years, that made a huge impression on me. The Paleolithic was uh, the time when uh, people uh, didn't grow plants and they weren't shepherds. They lived as hunter-gatherers. Some discoveries changed my view of uh, those prehistoric people and some are still one big question mark for me. All the discoveries are at the same level for me, but because I have to uh, begin somewhere, I'll uh, start with uh, traces and um, footprints from Trachilos in Crete. Some years ago, Dr. Gerald Gierlinski, a Polish scientist and specialist in the dinosaur's tracks, was on vacation in Crete. He sat in the shade relaxing. He saw people walking, leaving footprints in the sand. Suddenly he almost fainted because he saw traces of human feet on a stone slab on which people were also walking. Scientific research has begun undertaken by an international team of specialists, as can be seen in the presented article. The final result of the researcher's work was the conclusion that hominins left these traces 5.7 million years ago. Of course, this caused a small earthquake in the science of man, because it was too long ago for hominins in Crete, walking confidently on two legs, in an upright posture. The article is in bibliography in the video description. As we are talking about the most prehistoric Europeans, let's take a look at the archaeological sites of Sierra de Atapuerca in Spain. When talking about the first Europeans, we should also mention Georgia, where discoveries date back 1.7 million years. But I will not talk more about it here. We just weren't there. We were in Spain, at the Museum of Human Evolution in Burgos, and at sites in the Sierra de Atapuerca at the beginning of June this year. In the Sierra de Atapuerca, discoveries date back much more than a million years, while discoveries related to humans date back to 1.4 million years ago. Tools and bones were found there, with a skull among them. The age of the bones reached 1.4 million years ago. The bones were different from the rest found in the world, so a new species of human was named Homo antecessor. Here are his reconstructions from the Museum of Human Evolution in Burgos. The reconstructions were based mainly on bones dated back 850,000 years. Our hero also appears on the cover of the magazine Archaeologia and Historia. Here they look a little less noble, but still very human. In all reconstructions, Homo antecessor was not hairy. Males and females are estimated to have been somewhere between 150 and 175 centimeters tall. They lived in a warm, humid, pleasant climate just like in the picture from the mentioned interesting magazine. At Cima del Elefante, the guide told us about cannibalism from 850,000 years ago. A child was eaten here. However, boards in the Museum of Human Evolution in Burgos inform that cannibalism was with Homo antecessor from the first bones found, that means from 1.4 million years ago. Well, Let's stay with the child whose case was analyzed by the guide. The first information was that researchers reject cannibalism due to hunger because there is no indication that there was famine at that time. So we can think about cannibalism as burial, sacrifice or after fights between groups. Cannibalism after fights? This involves killing and eating the opponent's child. Other cases can be classified as funeral ceremonies. You can kill your opponent's children during a fight. But why eat them? Of course, I can't come up with several such reasons on the spot. But they take into account very developed symbolic thinking, just like cannibalism as burial. 
could home an antecessor from 1.4 million or 850,000 years ago be capable of it at such a high level? I mean self-awareness at a high level, maybe religious thinking? Sounds weird, but why this cannibalism not from hunger? Moreover, highly developed animals do not eat their own species out of hunger. It happens to people. It's absolutely puzzling. The group of sites from the Sierra de Tapuerca includes the famous Cima de los Huesos. Cima de los Huesos is the largest human bones deposit in the world. They are located at the bottom of a deep natural shaft. The board in the Museum of Human Evolution in Burgos says that these bones are over 530,000 years old, but some other sources indicate a date of 430,000 years. I don't know. At the bottom of Cima de los Huesos, researchers have found the complete skeletons of at least 28 individuals of both sexes who died at different ages. A beautiful biface tool, never used, called Excalibur by scientists, was also thrown into the hole. The bones are so well preserved that the analysis of nuclear DNA could have been made at the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig. Here I will quote an article which can be found in the bibliography in the description. The results now show that the Cima de los Huesos hominins were indeed early Neanderthals. Of course, there were and probably still are discussions about whether the bones in Cima de los Huesos were burials. Information board in the Museum of Human Evolution in Burgos says that it was the place of burials. It's stunning, early Neanderthals and their burials. The fact that hominins with small brains and primitive body structures can bury their deaths is confirmed by the case of Homo naledi from South Africa. This supports the hypothesis that highly evolved proto-Neanderthals buried their dead in Cima de los Huesos 530 or 430,000 years ago. Homo naledi is hominin discovered by Lieberger's team from Wits University in South Africa. Famous discovery from 2013 in the Rising Star Cave system. There are plenty of materials on this subject everywhere on the internet, so I'll tell you briefly. The anatomy of Homo naledi is very primitive. It had a small brain and was to 150 centimeters tall. I forgot to add, Lieberger's team discovered well-preserved bones in the Rising Star Cave. Berger and his team concluded that the bodies had to have been carried and placed into the chamber by Homo naledi because they appear to have been intact when the researchers entered the chamber for the first time. There is no evidence of trauma from being dropped into the chamber, nor of predation. The chamber is inaccessible to large predators and to Lieberger, who is too big for it. The chamber is an isolated system behind narrow and complicated passages and has never been flooded. That is, concluded the team of researchers, natural forces were not at play. Of course, the whole matter is being discussed, because many people cannot believe that someone with such primitive features and a small brain can bury deaths. The bones found in the cave were dated 335,000 to 236,000 years ago, but they look like from about 3 million years ago. In the meantime, further burials were discovered. There are some preliminary publications. Notice that Homo naledi also had to bring light into this cave because he left the deaths at a large distance from the entrance. What's the conclusion? A conclusion suggests itself that hominins, our ancestors, had behaviors known to us, human ones, probably from the very beginning no matter what the definition of this beginning is. 
Here I am reminded of the foreword to the album All Lascaux, written by Yves Copin, a French anthropologist who died a year ago. We made a video about it. The link to this video is in the description below because I don't want to repeat myself so as not to bore you. Another article that amazes me is a publication in Nature from 2022. Surgical amputation of a limb 31,000 years ago in Borneo. It all seems completely unbelievable and yet these bones were unearthed. Researchers discovered the skeleton in Liang Tibo, a large three-chambered limestone cave in Borneo with preserved rock art in the uppermost chamber. In this cave, researchers discovered the skeleton of a young adult Homo sapiens approximately 19 to 20 years of age at the time of death. The skeleton was dated to 31,000 years ago. That someone was buried in the cave at that time is not surprising. However, the appearance of this skeleton is completely astonishing because the buried person had the lower part of his leg amputated and as it turned out, died many years later. Clean, oblique sections can be seen on the bones of the skeleton. This is what the remains after surgical amputation look like. Moreover, there is no evidence of infection in the amputated leg. The most common complication of an open wound without antimicrobial treatment. For the amputated bones to heal so well, the person had to receive intensive care and post-operative care. In the article, researchers point to temperature regulation, regular feeding, bathing and movement to prevent bad sores while the person was immobile. The wound must have been regularly cleaned, dressed and disinfected, perhaps using locally available botanical resources with medical properties to prevent infection. It was also necessary to provide anesthetics for pain relief. Now the region closer to where I live, Europe, the Czech Republic. I'm talking about mysterious triple burial from Dolny Vestonice in Moravia. There are very interesting archaeological sites from the Paleolithic. We have made some videos about these sites and we will probably make more because they are worth it. Now I will remind you about the extraordinary burial of three young people from 26,600 years ago. Full video about it is in our playlist, so now briefly. In the archaeological site near Dolny Vestonice, researchers discovered three skeletons in one burial. Three young people were buried on a platform, partially dug into the slope, probably protected by some structure. The central person lied on his back, the right man on his belly, with his left arm superimposed over the left arm of the central person. The left man was positioned on his back, slightly twisted towards the central person, with both arms directed towards the latter's pelvis. Central person is the most intriguing. I say a person without gender, because there have been problems with that for years. At first, the middle person was considered to be a woman. Several theories arose with the woman in the middle. Simply, the structure of the bones seemed feminine to the researchers. Moreover, this person had a rare illness which deforms one's bones. This illness is lethal for males during early infancy. So in this case it would require being a woman to survive to a young adult age. But the latest research shows that the middle person was male after all. Maybe with some features of two sexes? All three were close relatives. Ochre was present in a powder state and as compact lumps in the whole burial area and its direct vicinity. There was a lot of ochre on the skulls of young people and also ochre concentration was in the pelvic area of the central man. As if it was not enough, the central skeleton had in his mouth a piece of animal bone with cut marks. Puzzling. 
It is clear that behind this burial there is some ritual and some vision of the world and the afterlife. Completely mysterious to me, but strongly influencing my imagination. To summarize this short overview, we humans and our human lineage have had symbolic behaviors for so long that their origins disappear into the abyss of the past. Sometimes discoveries are windows through which you can look into the complex belief system and interesting culture of a community dating back tens of millennia. And also this great medical knowledge. Sapkowski's universe, the stories of the Witcher, or Tolkien's universe comes to mind. Especially since I showed not only Homo sapiens here. Besides, such associations come to mind not only to me. Here is a quote from the book The World Before Us by Professor Tom Hayem from the University of Oxford. Research has shown unequivocally that the Earth was a prime valley, complicated place 50,000 years ago. To borrow from the words of Tolkien, we should think of it as a veritable Middle Earth in terms of the diversity of forms of the human family that existed at the time. There were five, six or even more different types of human present in various parts of the world. I will add that these people interbred with each other, which can be seen in the genes. These are just a few examples, because there are much more such interesting discoveries. But even the ones I presented show our ancestors as very intriguing and interesting. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to not miss the next content and bye bye.